that we get to have yet um, another wonderful, wonderful moment in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm just so thankful for his words. And again, guys, it's an honor to be able to serve you and bring you his words. Um, guys, this week we do have a few announcements that I'd like everybody just to kind of keep in the back of their minds as well as just in your heart and prayer. Um, last week I mentioned our brother Steve. And when spoke with him, confirmed his faith, he did pass away this week. So I just ask for everybody to keep the Chavez family in your prayers. All right. Um, furthermore, um, guys, uh, Katie and her daughter Jessica was also requesting prayer, um, dealing with situations there with the baby and um, custody and things like that. And so it's just, it's always hard to go through. So please keep her in prayer for faith, for strength, for, you know, believing through it and that God would just bless her with eternal, you know, faith and believing and not just for her, but also for her young baby. All right. Uh, guys, all of the healthcare workers, doctors, first responders, um, officers, I mean, I could just go on and on, but just everybody who's having to deal with kind of this whole outbreak in a different way than what a lot of us have had to deal with it. So um, pray for all of them for strength, um, for continued um, just energy to make it through. Okay, guys, because um, we need them. We need them to make it through. And um, they are very, very important to every single one of us. Um, so pray for them and pray for their safety and pray for their health. Um, also, guys, just our body, right? Just our entire body and their health, wealth, and prosperity. All right? Uh, also, just we covet your prayers as we start um, really again, starting to try to put forth some plans for the upcoming future. And um, us being able to, God willing, start uh, moving some things to be able to get at least some um, at first. And we you know we'll probably try to build into it. But however those plans goes, I'm, I'm not exactly sure yet. But as we develop those, pray for us and just the spirit of love to guide us, all right? As I know that he has, and he has been. So I love you all. And at this time, guys, again, I have a very, very special young man with me who would like to come and um, say our opening prayer for us. So at this time, Brother Mackay. Hello, um, and let's open to know a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for this day, and everybody just keeps Steve's family and all the other families out there in prayer, and doctors, and all the people who work every day while this virus is going on, and everybody just keeps them in prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mackay. Appreciate you. And your desire to do that, and um, I sure, sure love it and appreciate it myself. Uh, you know, with it, guys, it also provides me a little bit of a period of time with my son that I normally would not have in the same aspect. You know, and it's opened up our conversations about the Lord and about my classes with him, and um, not just with him, but with the whole family. And I've really been thankful for that and appreciate that and appreciate your faith. Thank you, son. Um, Today, guys, we're going to stay on the subject of hope, but it's hope remembered. Hope remembered. Because the fact of the matter is, guys, is if we don't remember it, that's when we lose it, right? Is when we forget. When we forget is when it's lost. If we knew where it was at that moment, it wouldn't be called lost. And so, you know, that remembrance, guys, is a big, big deal. So today we're going to be out of John chapter 14, verses um, 25 through 27. And then we'll also be jumping over to John 11, John 11, uh, just to highlight a few verses there as well, I believe, uh, verse like 43 and 44. Uh, so John 14, 25 through 27 is what we're going to be starting off in. So as hopefully you guys, um, you know, have some Bibles and again, remind everybody if you don't, if you don't have any Bibles at home, come down here and see me on Sunday. Um, I'm here from 10 to 12 uh, every single week to receive anybody that maybe just needs a word of prayer or uh, just to have some fellowship with, dropping off tithes and offerings, uh, you know, donations, things like that. Anything like that, I'm here for you. We also, though, we do have a bunch of Bibles. We have, um, I can't remember how many, we have a few hundred Bibles that we put on, put, I'm sorry, that we have here for anybody who needs them. So if you are one of those who needs one, let us know. Again, you can email us at pvbc. 
at gmail, or hold on, not pvbcaz at gmail.com, um, or you can email me directly at rogerpvbc at gmail.com, but Pleasant View Baptist Church, PVBC. Just make sure you get that in there, Roger PVBC, and send me that email. Um, I can ship it to you if I need to. So even if you're out of state or something like that, but you need a Bible, I'll get you one, all right? So let us know because when we're doing these classes and, um, you know, we call them classes, um, guys, but it's an experience. It's a walk. What we're doing is we're taking a walk through God's words and looking at how we can apply that to our everyday life. To be able to do that together is a beautiful thing. So also I encourage anybody who's able to do the Zoom with us on Sunday, get that link, join us. Be there with us, guys. It's a lot of fun. We get to have some interaction with each other. Um, a few, I think we had um, a few new ones this last week. I want to say three or four, maybe, maybe even more um, new ones. Every single one of them testified to how awesome it was, not only to get to see and hear everybody, but to be able to watch it together. And I know it's not the same as being down here, and trust me, it is not what we want long term, but... It's the situation that we're in, so we make the best out of it because that's what God's given us to do. And we, He's given us the ability to make the best out of every situation because He is our God. And He's just awesome that way. So if you can, jump in there with us. We'd love to have you, okay? Uh, but just a few different ways to experience the Lord. But when we're doing these classes and teachings, having the Bible there with you so that you can see it, that you can walk it through with us, it can be so beneficial for your faith. And so I really encourage anybody and everybody out there, guys, to really make sure that you do do so. Um, so today, hopefully, me giving that whole big intro there, you had enough time to turn to John chapter 14, verses 25 through 27. And again, the subject matter has been hope. So first, maybe we, we need to do, for anybody who's been missing or maybe has missed a few classes, for you to be, or just for our remembrance, <laughs> to be reminded that what we've been on, it has been hope, but what is our hope? Our hope is eternal glory. Our hope is based in Jesus Christ and nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness, yeah? Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness, yeah. That's the words. Beautiful, beautiful writings that were led by the Holy Spirit because he is our hope, right? See, with us, just in and of ourselves, we're just sinners. We've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. What we then justly deserve from God is his wrath, and we deserve hell. Because we've all sinned, every one of us, even the good ones, even the bad ones, and everyone in between. We've all, we're all guilty of that. But God loved us so much, his compassion comes. Because he loved us, he's seen that that sin that we had, he would have to punish us. That he's a just God. He's holy. He's perfect. He cannot have one sin in his presence. So therefore, what we all should have been, or what should have been done with every one of us is we should have all been cast into hell. But God, who is rich in mercy, loved us with such a great and grand love that he moved with compassion and sent us his only begotten son. And his son lived a perfect life that you and I and the rest of this world could not live. In fact, every single one of us in the flesh, we would have failed. Just like Adam, the first representative, if we were the representative, we would have failed too. It's the fact of the way that it is. But God, knowing this, loved us so much that He, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all got together and said, you know what? We love our creation. We love mankind so much, we're going to save them. We're going to do everything it takes so that they can be here with us, not just as created beings, but sons, children, daughters of God. Guys, and that's a beautiful day. And that hope, that's our hope. See, here we are going to mess it up. But there, all of that's gone. Here, there is going to be sadness. There's going to be times of grief and times of tears. But you know what? There, that will all be taken away. Here, there's times we fall into wonderment. But there, there will be no more wonderment. We will be known just as, and we will know as we are known. By him. So guys, here this world is cursed, but our hope is not here in this world, nor is it in the things of this world. It is not in ourselves, at least any of us should boast. All of our hope is in him. For there are works that we do have, which we who are faithful do have many, many works. But our works that we do have are not in us, they're all in him. Notice how our works, then what we testify of is him in our work. 
And when I say our work, it can be physical, our mental, our prayer life. It can be with our family at home. It's with our job at work. Everything that we do, we do it unto the Lord and unto His glory. Our hope is in Him. He is it. We, many of us, guys, we've tried. We've tried to find hope here. And what we found was that it was just a land of a desert land without life that was just like quicksand, always trying to swallow us back up into the death of sin and guilt, condemnation, judgment, all the things that we've been delivered from through Jesus Christ. So last week's class on hope was the rock that we get to stand on. And our rock is God. And He is, guys, our fortress. He is our strength. He is our God. Now with Him, we stand on Him. We don't have to be moved by everything else, even though everything else around us is changing and moving. And while that might seem uncomfortable, because it is, God does not change. It was wonderful today. I got to see Brother Courtney for a moment. And, you know, it was sweet because in the conversation, what we kept on coming back to and rediscovering in every which way that we went in our conversation, um, which wasn't overly, overly long, and yet at the same time, it was sweet because everything came back to God and His faithfulness. Him not changing. Him still yet loving us and us still yet loving Him and bringing that hope, bringing that hope to others, which is our reasonable purpose. So guys, today, John chapter 14 brings us back to one that we talked about a few weeks ago, which was the Holy Spirit. But what I was really stuck on was is that, you know, that the reality of our need to constantly remember the hope that we have. For despair itself, by definition, is when we believe that there is no more hope, when we start to think or convince ourselves that everything is hopeless. That is when we start to fall into despair. Now, despair will always lead us into sin and destruction. It leads us into judgments, into condemnations, into all kinds of nasty, nasty things because of our own emotion and because of where our heart and our mind are at. Where they're not at is in hope. And remember that hope is Jesus. So to say that, that it's not in hope, is literally to say that it's not really in Jesus. Now, one thing to realize when we are hopeless does not mean that Jesus or God has gone anywhere. So we have, but God has not. The nice part about God not moving is, is that if we return unto Him, He'll return to us, and immediately that hope can be revived in us, just like it was never gone. In fact, oftentimes I've seen is that person is made more alive. Have, they have more hope, more union, more faith, sometimes after having to go through one of those experiences. So don't count it all lost. Look to the Lord, guys. Continue to have hope in Him and know that He's going to work with all things together for our good. And He says, for the good of those who love Him. So when I say our good, I'm talking about all of us who have been busy loving Him. All right? And we love Him in all things. We love Him in word. We love Him in action. We love Him in thought. We love Him in prayer. We love Him in all things. So guys, I love Him. The Lord has loved us, so let us always be about remembering the great hope that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus himself is the one who is speaking here in John chapter 14. He says, all these things I spoke to you while being present with you. He says, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you. So different things that God is, or Jesus Christ himself has said to us, right? That he is our Lord. He is our Savior. That he did not come into this world to condemn this world, but that the world through him might be saved. Because the condemnation is already there. Sin and death is already there. So there's no need to condemn anything because in the end, anything that is not in the Savior will be condemned because it already is. So what we need is, is not more condemnation that we're already under, but we need hope to get out of that condemnation. So how do we get out of it? Well, God provided one way, one path, one truth, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. These things he spoke to us while he was here. If you remember, there was the different situations where he talked about our faithfulness. He talked about their faithfulness, and I say theirs, 
you know, in the moments when Jesus was actually here on this earth having these conversations. And then I say that he said them to us because everything that he said there, guys, was is here in the Bible, in these scriptures for that purpose, that we could discover the hope that we have in him. His words, let your heart not be troubled. Well, why does our heart get troubled? Well, our heart gets troubled, and I went back to John chapter 14, verse 1 right there. He says, you believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Man, just believe, live in me, live in me. Jesus says things like this, like if you just love me, then you'll love the Heavenly Father. If you'll follow me, then I will live in you, and you will live in me, and my Heavenly Father will live in you. The hope that that brings, guys, because we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to be able to stop every sin, and we're not going to be able to stop everybody else from committing sins. In fact, the Scripture, while He does encourage us not to live in sins, for what He says is, is how can we, who have died to them, live any longer in them? No, we don't want to live in them. We definitely do not want to glorify any of them. What we want to glorify is our Savior, whom has saved us, Therefore, we do not have to be troubled anymore because we believe. We believe that God did love us and that he sent us his only begotten son, that he by himself took away all of our sins. He is our hope and on him we stand, our rock, our salvation, our fortress. He says that he must go away. And so Jesus did, guys, he did go away, but he didn't leave us. He didn't leave us hopeless. You know, sometimes, guys, we feel like that because a situation has changed and something is different than the way that it was, and we feel like, oh my gosh, and then everything's just hopeless. Um, you know, somebody goes away or, you know, whatever happens, oh my gosh, it's hopeless. We have, have the loss of someone out of our lives. You know, those feelings and those emotions can be somewhat um, common, but again, guys, we do not have to be hopeless. For us... Jesus died, and we're not going to physically see him here in this flesh in a physical body. However, we still yet see him every day through the helper, through the Holy Spirit, who reminds us, who reminds us, who brings to remembrance the words of Christ. I have loved you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even to the ends of this world. Love one another. Love the Lord thy God. With all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. You know, guys, these words are living. They're ever-present living, even right now in each and every one of us, which is why we have hope, right? See, without these words and these, these words being re and us being reminded, excuse me, of these words, then we are just hopeless. Then it is just this world. It's just this life. If we get this one, that's it. That's all that it is. You know, you live it up. And if everything's horrible in it, then I guess that's out. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just, I can't imagine I can't imagine going throughout my whole entire life hopeless without having that hope of glory. Guys, you know, this world, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the life that I've had in it. I'm thankful for all of you and what I've got to experience. But see, what I'm thankful for really in it has been experiencing God throughout it. And whether it be up in the mountains or in the trees. And sometimes I have to be reminded of that. Sometimes I get so caught up in life that I have to remember the little things like the trees blowing, the wind whistling through them, that God gave me that sound that I could hear, that I could think of Him. See, so remember, remember Him. Sometimes, guys, when we are caught up, when we are caught up in our sin, when we are caught up in the things here in this world, man, we got to get free from those things once again. To be able to be free once again from them, not as if we have to crucify Christ all over again, but the reality that we still yet are in this battle, in this fight, right? We're still here in this earth. And while we stand on that rock, while we have God as our rock and as our fortress, sometimes for whatever reasons, we go kind of silly and we tend to kind of slide off the ledge a little bit. And thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit who brings us back to remembrance. The remembrance of where our peace was. Verse 27. He says, So peace I leave with you. Peace I live with you. And my peace I give to you. Not as this world gives do I give to you. He says, And let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Afraid. We no longer have to live in fear of God, of His judgment. Well, no longer do we have to live afraid, really, of anything. But now we can live in love, we can live caring about others. And we do not have to let our hearts 
be troubled by the troubled waters around us. Instead, we can stand on the rock and we can be patient and we can just know that he's got us. We can remain at peace, even though the storm around us, what is all is well within my soul, you know, uh, what is it? The storm bellows roll, but all is well within my soul. Yeah, guys, this world, no, it's chaotic. Our lives sometimes are very chaotic. What we have to deal with sometimes is a lot of chaos. What that chaos can do in a moment of chaos, you know, we tend to kind of, um, kind of just get caught up in the storm, right? We're just trying to get through it. And because of that, we can lose sight of things. And that's what we don't want. We don't want to, we don't want to lose sight of it. See, God gave us peace and he gave us that peace through Jesus Christ. For we once were at war with God, running from him, denying him, wanting to live life just for ourselves and the things of this world. When it did come to him, we tried to meet up to God's standards, which just left us more guilty and condemned, which God did not want. So instead, he sent us the peacemaker, Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit reminds us that this is true. And he says, but this peace, I leave with you. Which is beautiful, right? That he gave it to us. He gave it to us. He gave us peace. He said, here you go. Now we have it. He gave us hope. Here you go. Now we have it. So, guys, the fact of the matter is, what I find is that sometimes we lay it down. I don't know how else to call it, but I'm trying to figure out like analogies. But, you know, when we lose our keys, what happened? Right? We put them down somewhere and we just don't remember. We just don't remember where it's at. Once we find them, we're good. We have them, we can drive on down the road, right? But I feel like sometimes our peace, our hope, our joy, our love, our compassion, forgiveness, mercy, all of these things that the hope that God gave us and Jesus Christ brought to us, he brought us all of those. Mercy, hope, I'm sorry, mercy, peace, uh, forgiveness, joy, you know, those beautiful, beautiful gifts that God gave, he brought them all through Jesus. Now, sometimes, again, it's almost like we lay it down and we just kind of forget. Sometimes we just get wrapped up. Something goes wrong and all of a sudden we become the judge. Somebody doesn't act the way that we want them to act. All of a sudden we become the judge. We get all into it. Our hearts get all tore up. We get all angry. And next thing we know, sin and death is just all wrapped up all over us. And what we have to do is stop and remember where we set down our peace. Where did we sit down hope at? Because the road that we're on at that moment is pretty despairing, right? I mean, we're going to get to the point where God's not real, nothing's real, um, our, our, just our emotions are going to be all over us, and it's going to cause us a lot of pain and suffering. So we've all been there. I mean, I think that all of us really deep down, we could stop for a second and be real with ourselves, uh, not try to lie and let the Spirit really speak to our heart, then I think that, you know, we can all admit and confess that we've all been there. We've all laid it down. We've all laid Him down. Uh, we've, we've let go of hope and peace and joy. Not because we wanted to. I mean, guys, most of the time, it's not. It, you know, Satan is good at what he does. He's a deceiver. He is a liar. And he's very, very good at what he does. He tries to twist it all up, make it all about ourselves. You know, and sometimes... We just do. We get caught up in it. So I encourage you that if you know anybody who is, don't condemn them. But instead, remind them. Remind them where peace is at. Where peace was found. It was not found here in this world, guys. It was found in Jesus and in His words. Which I thank God that even right now we get to share in, even although it is through the technology of YouTube, at least we still get to share in that truth. We get to share in the hope and in the peace in Jesus Christ and be reminded because again, it's the remembrance part that is so, so important. If we remember our hope, then what are we? We're hopeful. If we remember our peace, then what are we? We're at peace. But when we forget it, when we forget it, it's very, very difficult. And once the waters are troubled, so to speak, you know, it does usually just take a little bit of time for those waters to calm back down. So if you find yourself not at peace. If you find yourself having forgotten where that peace and where that hope was at, do not live in condemnation. Stop that right now. Turn to the Lord, your Savior, Jesus Christ, and remember to reckon yourself dead to sin. 
Remember to go ahead and pick up his cross. Pick up. Go back and pick it back up. Because even though right now it might look heavy to you because of all of the burden that you've been under, I guarantee you when you pick it up, that burden will roll away. And what you will find again is the peace that God has promised. The reason why I can guarantee it is because God is true. God is true to his words. Now, when I say that you pick it up and it's there, it is. But that doesn't mean that we necessarily feel it that way. See, because the waters were already troubled, sometimes we still see those little waves. And, you know, what we have to do, though, is hold on to that peace. If we hold on to it and we stand on that rock and we do not move, guess what will happen to the waters around us eventually? Eventually, as long as we don't keep on messing in it, it'll come back down. What I mean is this, is, is um, reckon yourselves dead to sin. So when we get in sin, we throw it back. We get it off, man. We get back to peace. We grab back a hold of him, right? When we do this, then even at that moment, does that mean that our heart will just immediately not be troubled? Sometimes. Sometimes it is that way. Sometimes that peace runs back to us so fast. And the joy and the excitement, the fire of love, just is so overwhelming that we can't even contain ourselves. At other times, it's more of like a calm that all of a sudden we get, and yet we still kind of have those troubles, still kind of trying to grab a hold of us all the time. As they're trying to reach to grab a hold of us, guys, let us just keep our minds on that peace and keep on standing on that rock. And let God just lead us through that moment because he eventually will get us loose from all of those things. Guys, and some of those things, remember... Um, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he said that he had a thorn in his side all the way, guys, all the way through. Sometimes that's just necessary. It's necessary for us to always be reminded that our hope is in Jesus Christ and his righteousness and nothing else. So sometimes those little things are there, but that does not mean that we have to let go of our peace, our joy, and our hope. No, we do not have to let our heart be troubled. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. Clint Malden, I don't know, a year and a half now ago, two years ago almost now, you know, misery is an option. He said, I never knew it. I never knew that it was an option. The reality is, guys, is for us, it is. For us, we have the option to live in the misery or to live in peace. But guys, the rest of the world does not have that option. So we have the option to live in the trouble, or we have the option to live in Christ. We really do. Now, we can live afraid, or we can live honestly at peace again. Now, all these things that we have a choice in, remember that the world does not have that same choice. They're stuck in the sin and death. But remember, remember, how did you get out of it? How did you get it? Well, do you remember that day? Can you remember that day? That day when you were really just sitting there and you were hearing the message. Maybe it was somebody talking to you on the street. Maybe it was on the phone. Maybe it was at church. Maybe it was in a Sunday school class, a Monday night Bible study. Maybe it was somebody just showing up on your door on a weekday and just knocking and just telling you what God has done with you or for you and with you. <laughs> but guys, you know, no matter what your story is, we all share in the same one that we were all sinners and we were living in sin and death. We were just being consumed. We were all wrapped up in the things of this world. And they were killing us. They were dragging us right to hell, to complete separation from God for eternity. And then God changed that situation for us. And what he did was he sent us a messenger, and he sent us Jesus. But it came for us usually through a messenger. And that messenger brought us the words of Christ. The Holy Spirit then went to work through those, the helper, went to work through those words and convinced our heart and our soul and brought us hope and peace like we had never had before. So much so that we could not contain ourselves, but we had to confess him as our Lord and Savior. Now, guys, these things are, should not be just overly um, shocking to us because it is our experience. Why do I bring up this experience? Well, it is to remind us that the others out there that do not have that option, that do not have that choice, guys, we could give it to them though. We can bring them hope. We can let them know where our hope is. And guys, see, COVID doesn't change that, okay? It doesn't change our ability to be able to tell somebody 
Just because we wear a mask or we have to be six foot away or whatever the situation is, like it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't. It just means that we have to be able to go about it a different way, which should be okay because who do we stand on? We still stand on the solid rock. See, he still has not moved, even though everything in this world might be moving around us and changing around us. That's okay. He hasn't moved. He is still yet faithful. He is still yet our God. And he is still yet guaranteeing that if all of us will continue to love him and live in him, that we're all going to be with him in glory. Hope. Hope, guys. Remember. Remember the hope. Remember being remembered, guys. Remember being remembered. That's what this moment right here and this point really is, guys, is remember being remembered. Because God remembered you. Out of all of the billions and billions of people that have come into this world, guys, you know how much of a privilege that we should consider it that God remembered us? He remembered you. Um, a little statement that I seen this week, and I used it again for our children um, in our school here, but was that of winning a lottery. You know, and guys, with God's love, it's like winning the lottery every day. Because see, guys, God could choose. He could have chosen to love anybody. But He didn't just choose anyone. He chose you. How much hope should that give you? See, God could have shared that message of Jesus Christ to anyone and gave them eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to believe. But He didn't just give it to anybody. He gave it to you. Rejoice in the Lord. Always, and again I say rejoice, because that love, that love is true every day, just like His mercies are new every morning. Guys, it is every single day. Remember, remember His words. Remember that He remembered you. So I'm reminded of the story of Lazarus and his passing away and, his, and Jesus going and raising him from the dead. How they thought that he would have been forgotten Oh, he, Jesus forgot Lazarus. Religion. Religion was like, yeah, you know, if he would have been here, then he could have helped them. But he wasn't here, so now he can't. You know, it's funny how we try to put God in a box like that, but God's not confined in any kind of box. We try to say that, oh, well, because things aren't going the way that I want them to go, then this person or that person or God himself then is against me. And we go into despair and we lose hope. We start talking, what we, our testimony starts to become, is about all of the things of this world. It's about the death of this world. See, just for them on that day, this is all out of John chapter 11, by the way, as it walks through that whole entire story, we can see that battle going back and forth with every single one of them that's involved in it. But as it happens, Jesus just stays the course. He says, no, to his words, no, everything that's going on is so that God will be glorified. No, everything that's going on is so that you will know that I am both Lord and Savior. Everything that's going on is so that you know that you'll have hope in eternal glory. And that hope begins now. So Jesus goes, I'm cutting out a lot of the story for time's sake, guys, but Jesus goes and he stands before them. And he calls and he tells them, listen, man, you need to let Lazarus out of there. Roll back that tomb. Roll back that, that stone that's covering that tomb. And they tell him, no, no, it stinks. And Jesus says, man, didn't I tell you that if you just believed that you would get to see the glory of God? And they said, yes, so they do. They go ahead and they roll it back. And my favorite part is right there at the very, very end. And it says, and now when... This is um, 43, verse 43, John chapter 11, verse 43. says, Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Come out of there. And it says, And he who had died, he who was dead, came out, but came out bound hand and foot with all of the grave clothes. And so Jesus turned to them and he said, Then so now loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. See guys, the fact of the matter is, is that everybody, when they hear the message of Jesus Christ, and they really, at the first, you know, every one of us, right? We were dead in our trespasses and sins. Just like Lazarus was laying there. Just as real as Lazarus was dead laying on that slab right there, so were we dead in our trespasses and sin. Maybe that gets it across a little bit more. Just as much as his body was starting to decay and rot, therefore it stunk, 
so is it that we who are in our sins are in our death and this flesh and everything of this world and it's all just falling apart heading right towards that abyss but God who is rich in mercy did not forget us but he came to us and he knocked on our heart's door and he called us up and out of that death he called us out of hell out of the sin out of the judgment, out of the condemnation. That was our own judgments. That was the other people's judgments. And that was God's judgment, by the way. That was our condemnations, other people's condemnations towards us, and God's just condemnations that he would have had on us. Yes, he called us out of sin and death. He called us out of that grave. And he says, man, you come forth. You don't stay in it anymore. Don't stay in that sea of despair. But instead, stand on the rock, God of hope. Stand on the rock of hope. Stand with me. He called us out, guys. And when we step forth, when we did step forth and say, man, Lord, yes, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. Then what was his command but to loose us from the sin and death and for us to be let go free, to love one another? Notice at that point, guys, in the sin and death of all those grave clothes, with that is disease and decay. Now being loose from all of that, now we can freely love one another. We can be free to love, no longer being wrapped up in the sin and death. And again, I have to caution, remind, remember, remember. Because there seems to be moments, guys, that every one of us, I myself included, all of a sudden find some sin, some death, something from that old tomb that's already been judged by Jesus Christ to kind of try to wrap itself around me. And we have to stop at that moment. We have to say, listen, man, no, wait a minute. Where was my peace? I don't have to let. I don't have to let this be. I don't have to let my heart be troubled. I don't have to live in that fear anymore of judgment and condemnation. No, now I have not been called to that. What I've been called to was the mountain where I cried out, Abba, Father, save me from my sins. And Jesus said, Father, I have done it. And the Holy Spirit said, Amen, so be it, it is so. Let us remember that we were remembered. This point is so big because it, take, it took us. Him remembering us took us from hell, death, guys, and despair, and brought us to hope in life and the peace that we now get to live in. But this peace that we were called to, the hope that we were called to, that old death, that grave that we were pulled up and out of, and that rock that we now get to stand on, we're there for a purpose. We are there to be that lighthouse. We are there to call to others, for us to also bring to them the best news from God to man, for those words to come into their ears and into their hearts, and for the Holy Spirit to make them alive and remind them of the God who is, who is a true God, the God of love. The true God who loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. That anyone that would just believe upon him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. So guys, I pray that we remember. That we remember at all times that we have been loose. We've already been loose from the sin and death. We don't have to play in it anymore. That if it does get on to us, that we can reckon ourselves dead indeed to sin. That we can return to that cross, not to live under the burden of death, but to be able to pick up the life, the place where all of it was paid for, that we could show others that it has been, that he completed that work, that he did it all. He did it all right there on that cross. And he didn't just stop there and die, but he rose victorious. And we also then live, live right now, raised with him. The peace, the hope, the joy, the freedom to now love now that sin and death has been put away. Guys, it is a wonderful, th wonderful thing to remember the hope that we have in our Lord and our Savior. And guys, for truly He, there is no hope. I'm sorry. There is no hope. Truthfully, there is no hope outside of Him. When this world is nothing but despair. It is nothing but chaos. And you know, I find that in those moments of chaos, I oftentimes for am forgetful. I forget little things, you know, and guys, man, not to say that he is little, but we, one thing we have to do, guys, is remember him. Love him. Love him, guys, because he's loved us. Remember that we do not have to let 
our heart be troubled. But instead, we can stand on the reality of what He's done in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ today, tomorrow, and forever. For He is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. So guys, I love you. And I look forward to seeing you all. You know, not only as soon as that today can be that I get to see each and every one of you and put my arms around you and give you a big old hug. Tomorrow, if it be then, or in eternity. But guys, all the way between now and for the rest of eternity. I love you and the Lord's loved us and let us always remember that hope. And let us remind each other of that hope and let us remember that He remembered us. So let us remember that others need that hope too. I love each and every one of you greatly. I pray that it's been a great, great class today. And guys, that His peace we would live in always. So at this time, we're going to have a word of prayer. Makai wanted to also close for us. So guys, at this time, Brother Makai, step up here. I love you all, by the way. Happy Valentine's Day. God is the greatest Valentine of all, guys. I love you. Keep the faith. Hello, and let's close in a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for this day, and everybody just have a, 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 the, a good of the rest of the day, and everybody just prays and loves for everybody out there and for all the doctors. Amen.